Do you write color like this or like that? Do you say privacy or privacy? Garage or garage? Obviously, this is all correct English, and these are but variations with the exact same meaning. English is naturally not the only language that contains variations like these. Arabic as well has different variations depending on where the language is spoken. Since the Holy Quran was revealed in Arabic, it too had variations within. And this video will tackle the concept of variations in the Holy Quran. So let's get started by answering the first question. What are the seven ahruf of Quran? And what does even harf mean? At the time of the revelation of the Holy Quran, there were many different variations of the Arabic language. People used different pronunciations, and they spelled words differently, and sometimes the grammatical structure of the sentences had variations too. For this reason, the Holy Quran was not revealed in one variation, but in seven. Each of these variations is called harf. When the Qur'an was revealed, it was revealed with all seven variations at the same time. We call them the seven ahruf, or in Arabic, al-ahruf al-sab'a. So these ahruf represent seven variations of some words in the Holy Qur'an. So each difference, no matter how minute or minuscule it is, it goes directly back to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Therefore, these variations are not up to us. So there is no and has never been any space for us for using our own variations of the Holy Quran. So why do these ahruf, and that is by the way the plural of harf, why do they exist? There are mainly three reasons why there are variations of the Holy Quran. First, it is there to make it easier for people with different dialects to read and recite the Qur'an without any problems. Like in this example. What you see in this ayah is a variation in the last word. Notice and hear the difference between how the last word is pronounced. وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنثَى وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنثَى since some dialects did not use Hamzat Qata in this position, it is acceptable to drop it, making it easier for those who already speak this tongue. Another example to confirm the point. هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى so, again, there are some differences between these two examples. They are the exact same ayah. Second, is that some of these variations that we see in the Holy Quran, they actually add another dimension without contradicting one another. Like in this example. وَالَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَلَنْ يُضِلَّ أَعْمَالَهُمْ وَالَّذِينَ قَاتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَلَنْ يُضِلَّ أَعْمَالَهُمْ In the first variation of the word, the word قُتِلُوا is translated to have been killed, which would make the meaning of the verse as follows, and the deeds of those who have been killed in the cause of Allah will not go to waste. But then looking at the second variation of the ayah, we see that the word qatalu means have fought, which would make the meaning of the ayah as follows. And the deeds of those who have fought in the cause of Allah will not go to waste. As we can see, it adds a miraculous dimension to the ayah, adding and enriching its meaning. So the deeds of those who have been killed and those who just fought in the cause of Allah will not go to waste. So the variations here added another dimension without contradicting the one that is already there. And the third reason is that it is to tighten the challenge made against those who don't believe in the Holy Quran. That still, with different variations, the Holy Quran is consistent and only gets richer 
and more challenging without contradictions and without any mistakes. The next question is, what kind of changes are there when we talk about the seven ahruf or in Arabic, al-ahruf al-sab'a? What kind of changes can we expect? Now, the variations may involve difference in nouns. That, for example, in one variation, a word is mentioned in the plural form and another it is mentioned in the singular form, like in this example. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ So the word أَمَانَاتِهِمْ that is plural and the word أَمَانَتِهِمْ that is singular. Another type of difference is a grammar difference like difference between the conjugation of verbs like in this example. فَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا بَاعِدْ بَيْنَ أَسْفَارِنَا وَظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا بَعِدْ بَيْنَ أَسْفَارِنَا وَظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ And of course these two verses mean the same thing, but it is only how different people say the same thing. Another type of variation is the absence or the addition of a word. And this is one of its example. Notice here that the change is merely syntactic, meaning that it doesn't affect the meaning of the ayah, but just the choice of words to say the same thing. Last is some differences in the application of the Tajweed rules, like in this example. وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى Another example. وَاتْلُ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ كِتَابِ رَبِّكَ وَاتْلُ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ كِتَابِ رَبِّكَ now that you understand what a harf is in the Holy Quran, why it exists and what kind of variations there are linked to each harf. Now let's find out what are qira'at then. The word qira'at is a plural of the word qira'a, which translates into a way of recitation of the Holy Quran. So a qira'a is a way of recitation that is attributed to a qira'a master. So Qira'a is just the selection that the Qira'a master has made based on the variations of the seven Ahruf. Now let's have a look at an example to understand this point fully. In the first surah of the Qur'an, Surah Al-Fatiha, we can see that there are many variations that we can choose from. These variations, as we have understood, represent the seven ahruf of the Qur'an. Of course, I'm going to give you an example of the variations of Surah Al-Fatiha. This is not everything there is. For example, the word Malik, you could say it as Malik or Malik. And in the seventh verse, the word Sirat, it starts with a Sad. Some variations of the word Sirat in this position is turning the Sad into Sin. So you would say Sirat. But some variations as well will turn the sad in this position to an almost zay. So you would say zirat. So here we have three choices only in this word. Moving on a little bit further with the word alayhim. Now we can say alayhum, alayhumu. So as we can see, there are many choices that are available that we can choose from. Now, the Qira'a master has made certain decisions and will choose from these available variations of this surah. The product of his selections will be called a Qira'a. So, a selection of variations equals Qira'a. There are 10 confirmed masters of Qira'at, and all of them combined cover all the seven Ahruf.
you can find the list of the masters of the Qiraat in this poster, which you can download from the description of this video. So these 10 masters of Qiraat are the only 10 confirmed masters that are directly linked to the Prophet peace be upon him. Each one of these masters has two confirmed students, and each one of these two students has learned and specialized in a distinct variation of the Holy Quran. These students are called Rawi or narrator. So for example, Asim al-Kufi has made a number of decisions and selections from the seven ahruf of the Quran and he taught it to two of his students and they are Hafs and Shu'ba. And today we have the Qira'ah of Hafs an Asim which is one of the most famous Qira'at nowadays which means that Hafs is therefore the student of Asim, and Asim is the one who made the selections from the available variations of the Quran. Now the students of the students are called Tariq or method. So the students of Hafs are then called Tariq. Let's have a look at an example that involves the Qira'a of Asim from two different narrators. So the first one will be Hafs an Asim and the second one will be Shu'ba an Asim. قَالُوا أَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزُوَا قَالُوا أَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزُوَا So now you might be thinking, well, these people have made choices based on the seven Ahruf. Can't I just have my own choices in reciting the Quran? And the answer is yes. You can actually pick and choose what you want from the variations of the Quran. Because it is all Quran and it is all confirmed and can be traced back to the Prophet peace be upon him. And now you would think, well, since Ahraf is just another word for dialects, can we just use the contemporary dialects that we have nowadays for Arabic to read the Holy Quran? And the answer is definite no, that is impossible. The choices that Allah has made for us are made this way for a reason. The variations of the Holy Quran do not contradict one another and do not change the meaning. But if we, for example, want to use, uh, let's say, Sudanese dialects, and some of the dialects in Sudan, they turn Qaf into Ghayn. So they would read this ayah completely differently. And of course, the word غدر is completely different from the original ayah, which is القدر. So this would change the meaning. Or if you want to use the Egyptian dialect of Arabic, and would say ومن حيث خرجت. Now of course, in the Egyptian Arabic, they turn jim into g. And this would be very confusing for some dialects in Yemen that actually understand G as Qaf. So if they hear the word Kharagt, they would think it is actually Kharagt, which would completely change the meaning and it would lead to big confusions. And one last example is that some Turkish brothers, they, is that they exchange the letter Ta into Da. And that is actually a mistake because they would read وَحَفِظْنَاهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ But the problem is, if you come across an ayah like this, and you would apply this rule to it, you would completely change the meaning of the ayah to a point that is completely unacceptable. قُلْ أَضِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ And of course, أَضِيعُ is a completely different word than أَطِيعُ. So the contemporary variations of the Arabic language nowadays cannot be used to read the Holy Quran. Now here are some of the most important sources for those who are interested in learning about the differences between Qira'at and if you want to add variations to your recitation. Alright, so the first source that we will talk about today is nquran.com. And on this website, you can find the comparison between all the different qira'at. So here you can choose the surah, 
and you can choose the AI from here. And then when you choose the AI that you want to see compared, it will show all the 10 confirmed Qira'at and each Qira'a will have two narrators. So in total, there will be 20. So in this example, we see verse number 24 from Surah Al-Hadid. And then we can see that the differences between each Qira'a is highlighted with a different color. You can also listen to it if you click on this icon to see how it is pronounced. The other source is, is the website called QuranFlash.com. And this website will also give you a Mus'haf with different Qira'at. So you can see Mus'haf Ruwayat Ad-Duri. You can also find uh, Mus'haf Hafsa An Asim, and you can also see Mus'haf Warsh and many other types of Mus'hafs. So you can find different types of Mus'haf. And of course, each Mus'haf with a different Qira'a will have its variation written down in this type of Mus'haf. The last source is an app that you can download on your Android smartphones, and it is called Bridges Translation. And this is a translation of the Holy Quran that takes into account all the different variations between all the different Qira'at. And finally, if you think I am a beginner in the Holy Quran, do I still have to learn all of this? The answer is yes and no. Yes, you have to be aware of the fact that the Holy Quran was revealed in seven Ahruf and that it has variations. Since some people, out of ignorance, attack Islam claiming that there are many distinct versions of the Quran and that Quran, like other books, has been changed. So it is important to know what this is so that you can stand on a solid ground. However, you don't have to know the details of the different variations of the Qira'at. My advice is that you should focus on just one mode till you master it and you become confident at using it. Afterwards, you can enrich your knowledge by learning more. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something new today. If you did, please like and share the video for other people to learn from it. And please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.